This is the fourth video of the series and we're adding appointment booking functionality in our WordPress website using the Jet Appointment plugin. Hi, my name is Stratos and I'm constantly producing video tutorials about WordPress. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. In the previous video, we got ourselves familiar with the forms functionality inside Jet Engine and now we are ready to create our homepage form. This is the form that we're going to create. Of course, we're going to change some things and that's why I say create. And if we go here and open that, I can now start building the form. If we go into the insert appointment, I'm going to see that I have four fields that I have created already for the database and I haven't assigned them in any field inside the form. If you don't remember about those four fields, let's go into the appointments, let's go into the settings. They were created in the first video of the series and if we go inside the tools, we're going to see those uh, fields. These are the fields that are crucial for my business, so I want to know from the visitor his phone number, car maker, car model and car year. In your case, maybe you want to know some personal information about the visitor, maybe their age, their sex or something like that. This depends on what you're going to build and the website that you're going to apply those jet appointments. Let's close that and let's go back to the form. So we need to create four new fields. Let's push the add field four times. And as you can see, we have the field name here four times. So I'm going back into the incident appointment and I'm going to copy the phone number. I'm going to put the same name inside the field that I were going to edit, that I'm going to edit because I want to make my life easier. So uh, when I'm going to assign this field into the form field, they will have the same name. So I don't have any chance in messing things up. Let's go and edit that. So this is uh, the phone number. So I'm going to go and paste here the name. And since it's a phone number, I can go into the field type and select tell, so telephone. And this will say that it will not accept letters and only numbers. After that, I will go into the label and I will put here something like type your phone number. Let's put here small n and the space. I will leave it as required and I'm going to hit apply changes. Remember to hit apply changes every time. Let's copy the next one, which will be the car maker. And let's go up here. Let's edit that. And I'm going to paste first the car maker and I'm going to leave it as text. Now, keep in mind that in this uh, website, I can just select some car makers. I only want to fix Toyota, Honda or something else, maybe two or three makers. So if I had something like that, I could go, I could change the text to something like a select or a radio and then the visitor would select the car maker and he could see that I have only four or five available makers and those are the only makers that I will accept. Let's go into the label and I'm going to put here type your car maker. Okay, let's go and apply that into the next field let's first copy the car model let's edit the third field paste here car model and this is type your car model let's apply the changes and let's go to the last field which is the car year car year and let's edit that Let's go into the name, paste that, and here is type the year that your car was made. Let's apply the changes and now I can go into the appointment and I will find all those fields that I create inside here. So phone number, phone number, car maker, car maker, car model, car model, and car year, car year. I'm going to hit apply first here and then I'm going to update that. Last thing before viewing the front end and the form is going to be to change the position of the submit button into the bottom. 
as you can see, I have it on the bottom at this moment, but if you have it in here, just grab it and move it down here. Hit apply and then go and see how it looks in the front end. So this is what we have at this moment. And now the visitor must select the service, must select a technician, then he must select the date and the hour of the appointment, and then add all those four information that we have. All of those are going to be assigned inside his appointment and they will follow the appointment every time. So when we book an appointment, we're going to see all those information. Let's do that. Let's select something here. So I'm going to select the change tires. I'm going to select for the technician, John. Then I'm going to select 22. And then let's select this one, this slot. Okay, and then we have the information about the service, the technician, then the date and the hour. And let's go and select here test one. Type phone number, this one, car maker is Honda. Type of car model is S2000. And type the year that that car was made. 2011. Let's go and book now. I will get here an information that my appointment was successfully submitted. Here is the one form successfully submitted. Now, if I go back to the form and if I scroll down, I will see here the message settings. So here from the form successfully submitted, you may want to change that like an appointment successfully submitted or submitted. Okay, successfully. Something like that. Then you can change, of course, the submit failed, validation error, enter an invalid email and or other notification that we have here, the message settings. Let's go and update that. And now if I go to the jet appointments and open the appointments, I will see that I have new, a new appointment in here. Okay, so we have the change tires from John. This is the provider, the technician. The user email is test one, and this is the date and the start and end time of the appointment. As you can see, it's marked as pending. And if I go and click here, the actions and in this info, I will get all the information about the appointment. So the phone number of the visitor is this one, the car maker is Honda, S2000 and 2011 the year. All the other information are here, and I can even edit that or delete that. If you hit this pencil, it means that you can edit directly this appointment and you can save or cancel. And if I click here, this is the delete button. Uh, I can change to calendar and I can see the calendar and then I will find this uh, appointment. And of course I can change into a timeline and I can see inside the timeline all the appointments. Let's go back to the list. Also here I have some filters so I can select the technician which is the provider basically and I can select the John one and I will see nothing inside here and then if I select only John I can see all the appointments for John and this is the one and clear filters to clear those out. Let's go and delete that and here I have the information as I've said but if I go here edit that and then sorry, not edit here, let's go into the info and let's press here delete, it will immediately be deleted. So be sure that you are very careful and not hit delete if you don't want there. Now let's go back into the form, let's close the appointments and here we're going to add into this end email the new information that we have from the form. So let's open the first send email. I know that this is the administrator, even though there is no indication here and I would like as I've said in the previous video, to have some indication where this uh, email is sent to. So let's go and open that and just open that in to have those here. So we have those uh, content for the email and this is all the information that we have. Remember that those things are something that is going to be replaced with the actual information. And let's uh, put a bit of space here. So I'm going to add here the car maker. Maker then the car model let's go up on top and let's put here the user phone number and after that the car year
Okay, so now I can go into here and I can grab those uh, fields and since I cannot copy and I don't want to open every time here in order to go and grab the name, I can go into the insert appointment and I can grab the name from there. So car maker is the same with the car maker field from the form. So I can grab this and I can go into the car maker and put that in here. Remember to add the percentage into the beginning and into the end. After that, let's go and grab the car model. Car model, let's go and grab the next one, which will be the car year. Car year and then the user phone number. Let's go and grab that too phone number phone number okay and let's add the percentage into the beginning and to the end remember not to leave spaces and the space is going to be here percentage and percentage percentage and percentage so now the administrator will go and grab in his email all those information along with the email that is going to notify him about the new appointment into the next email, I can go and put, if I want the appointment details, and I can go and put the car year, car model, and car maker in order to just send all those information into the client to remember that he has selected all those things. Now, I'm going to do also something different inside here. Let's see first if I have saved all the information. I have saved it, but let's click apply. And I'm going to add two new fields. Those fields are going to be only for marketing reason, nothing else. So I'm going to ask the visitor, where did he learn about us? Let's change the name into hear about us here. About us. You can put whatever name you want inside here. And I'm going to change the type and I'm going to go for a radio box. And then the label is where did you hear about us? After that, I'm going to select the manual input. You can have dynamic input inside here, but I'm going to add manual. And the options will be the first is radio. And let's go for the label radio. Now, in case you're wondering the value and the label, the value is going to be registered inside the database. And this is what is going to follow along this form. And the label is what is going to show in the front end. So you can have something like you hear about us in the radio. So select this one. And of course, I don't want all of those information to go inside the database. It will just register the word radio. After that, let's go and add here the TV. And for the label, it will be TV. Add here the website. And the label, which will be website. And let's go and add another one. And this will be uh, Facebook, maybe. Or social media. And let's copy that and paste it uh, in the label as well. After that, I'm going to hit apply changes. And now I'm going to add another one. In case the visitor are going to select the website, I'm going to ask them where, uh, what was the name of the website. So let's change that to name, website, or website name, website name, website, website, name and the label will be type the website name I'm going to leave that not required because those are just for market reasons and I'm going to do the same to the previous one that I forgot to put as none required so the label is this one and I'm going to hit apply changes let's go into the radio into this one and I'm going to deselect the required and now I want to do something else, which is the condition rule. This will mean that this uh, field will going to be hidden 
and if the visitor is going to select for the ready option the website then he will get another field that it will say what was the name of the website that you hear about us so let's go in and click here and now let's go and scroll up i'm going to click add rule and for the type i'm going to uh, leave it as show this field if and you have other two options hide this field if and set value for this field if i'm going to leave it as show this field if then the field is going to be the hear about us field and the operator was going to be equal you have other as well options i'm going to set equal and this is the value to compare so remember then we said about value this is the one that you're going to put here exactly the same so it was website if you misspell it here it will not work so i'm going to hit apply changes and i'm going to update that let's go first and view the form in the front end and let's go here refresh okay so we have the where did you hear about us if the visitor check radio tv or facebook nothing happens but if he check website then he will have another field then he can just go and type the website name and then click to book now go back into the form and here we're going to do something else we're going to add the new notification and this notification is going to be sent an email i'm going to hit mail to i'm going to select custom email and this will be the email that it will go into the marketing team so the email address will be marketing at car.com then you can select if you want the reply subject will be new appointment from name will be the info if you want at car.com from email address sorry that was the email address and the name will be car technician car tech the name of the website car tech maybe the content will be html and here i'm going to select which fields i want to send into the marketing team of course since it's just for marketing reasons i don't want them to collect any data from the appointment except those settings that i have for the marketing so let's go here and let's go and see what we have we have the hear about us so let's grab that this is the name let's put it here and then we have let's click cancel and let's see the next one website name and let's copy that also and let's put it inside here and let's go and type something like a new appointment was registered the visitor here about us from and then we will go and set the here about us with the percentage and in case it's a website they will also get the name of the website and i'm going to put that in brackets brackets and remember that you have to go and put the percentage on the front and on the end here okay and since i have deleted the website and i deleted the letter i put here the letter n and it was my mistake so they will get the name uh the hear about us and the field the tv radio or something different in case they will get the website they will also get the website name now if uh, this is not selected as a website they will get two brackets that are going to be empty but it doesn't matter there's nothing wrong with that okay they will get some brackets that are empty no problem on there i'm going to hit apply changes and as you can see you can create more fields and more notifications and you can do whatever you want with that this can open some more solutions some more things that you can do with this form let's continue the styling and here we're going to refresh okay and let's first make an appointment let's go for change tires let's select john one let's select 22 or 23 okay this was the slot and i'm going to select the user one 
phone number this one let's go for honda again let's go for s2000 let's go for 2011 let's go for radio so nothing will be selected here and let's go and select the book now and of course i forgot to scroll the book now into the end of the form we're going to do it next okay this will be appointment submitted successfully and let's go and grab the button and scroll that down into the bottom let's hit update and let's open the appointments to see that we have the appointment here Okay, and once it's open, you can see all those fields, except, of course, for the marketing fields. So that we're not going to be registered inside the appointment details. Let's go and delete that. Close that. And now we're going to change a little bit how the form looks. Now, let's go into the services and let's open that. And here we're going to see that we have switch page on change. Now, this is not something that you have in every type of field. So if I go and select that to be text, you will see that you will not have any change uh, once this is filled. You have only when you select uh, here the select, then you have the switch page on change. You can see that you have it also in the radio, switch page on change, and maybe in checkboxes. I don't remember. No, not in checkboxes, only on select and on radio. This means that if the visitor is going to select something, then automatically this will go into the next page. Now, in order to go into the next page, you must also do something else, but we're going to go into the first step, which is this one, and we're going to see the differences. Let's check the switch page on change and hit apply changes. And now let's go and update that. Since I have selected that to be a radio, I'm going to see the changes up in here. Let's go and refresh here. And now you can see the services change tire season and service and oil change. Let's go and select the change tires. And of course, nothing is going to happen because we don't have any other page for the form to switch to that. So we need to break the form into pages. And in order to do that, we have to go back into the form and we have to select add page break. Once we do that, and we're going to grab that, and we're going to put it under the field that we have selected to go into the next page automatically, then I can go and update the form. And now, if I go into here and refresh, I will see only one field, the service. Once I select what service I want, let's go for oil change, this will go and automatically switch into the next form. Now, in case you I uh, want to select something different than radio. Let's go and select again uh, something different, which will be the checkboxes. I don't have any settings to go automatically into the next page, and it doesn't matter too much. It doesn't go automatically, but I have the option to go by hitting the next button. So let's go and update that, and let's refresh the form. So now I can select the oil chains and nothing happens. But if I go and select the next, then it will go into the next uh, page of the form. So those two fields can go automatically. But if you don't want to put those two fields, then just the visitor will go and select the next. No problem here. Let's go back here. Now, I don't want only the service to be in the first page of the form. I want also to have the technician because it looks to me a little bit weird to show the first the services and then the technician and then in the third page the date and then in the fourth page the fourth page all of those fields so let's go and do that i'm going to go here i'm going to grab the appointment provider and i'm going to put that before the page break so now if i update here and let's go and refresh here I will see that I have those two fields inside here. Let's go and select the checkboxes and let's change that from checkboxes into radio. Let's apply the changes and then we're going into the appointment provider. I'm going to click here and I'm going to see that here I also have the uh, to automatically go into the next page. It is here that says switch page on change. So I can go and select that to be yes, update that. And now if I go here and if I go and refresh here, I will see that 
when I select the technician, it will go automatically into the next page. Let's go and uh, select here change tires and here I'm going to select John 1 and this will automatically go into the next page. John 1. one. Okay, didn't uh, change, so maybe I didn't save that. Let's go here. Let's open that. Yes, I didn't save that. Let's go and select that to yes and let's apply. Let's update. Okay, check that now this is saved. Okay, it's saved. So let's go and refresh here. Oil change. Then let's go for Peter 1 and this will go straight to the next page. Now that I am in the second page, I need also to put here instead of the book now, I need to put also a button that says go back into the first page where I'm going to do that. I'm going first to add another break into the end of the date. So let's do that. Let's go cancel here. Let's go and add another page break. I'm going to drag that underneath the appointment date and I'm going to open that. And here I have the add previous page button. Let's apply that. Let's hit apply changes and let's update that. And now let's go and refresh the page. Let's go and select the change tires. Let's select the one that is the technician, John. And now I have here, as you can see, the back and next. So I can go back and maybe switch to another service or another technician if I want. Let's select here the next one, which will be 26. And let's check this lot and now I have the information here and if I go to the next I will have all the information here for the visitor to add. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the calculator field before the submit button so the visitor will know what he's going to pay for that service. In order to do that I'm going to add a new field and I'm going to put that before the submit button and let's edit that here for the type I'm going to switch that to a calculated for the field name, I'm going to put appointment total. And for the calculated formula, I'm going to copy the macro that says here, field appointment date. This will be automatically replaced with the price of the appointment. Also here, I'm going to select for the calculate value prefix to add something like the total amount is and then the dollar sign and after that we're going to have here the price okay let's put an N here and amount let's click apply changes let's update that and let's go to the front end and refresh here so let's select the change tires. Let's select then for the technician John 1. Here let's go for 24th. This slot. And now we have the change tires, February, and this is the slot. Let's go for the next. And now you can see the total amount is $100. Let's go back into the form. And now we're going to change the form a little bit, make it pretty make it easier to the eyes and we're going to add something different which will be templates for those two fields the service and the provider in order to do that we're going to create some templates and we're going to do that inside the engine and inside the listings let's open that and let's go and refresh here so these fields we're going to replace the selection that we have here we have here the service and we have here the technician. Let's go into the listing and we're going to add a new. Here for the listing source, I'm going to leave it as post. For the from post type, I'm going to change that into services because first I'm going to create the template for the services. And here I'm going to put a name for that template. So this will be service. Service. single form template. 
So I will know that this is the template for the single service inside the form. You can put, of course, whatever name you like here, but just put something that makes sense to you in order to find it later on. So create the listing item and this will open into the Elementor right away. And remember that here you can create whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to click here and I'm going to add three columns. The first will be an icon just to make it a little bit better to the eyes. So let's go and search the fields. And here we're going to see that we have the check mark. Let's go and grab that. So here we can add two icons. The first will be the default one. That is the icon that is not checked. And then we have a different icon when uh, someone presses the service and check that service. So you can go with whatever icons we, you want. Usually we put two icons that are close to each other, but not exactly the same. So you can go with something like a check mark and put something like uh, this, that it's empty with no color. And then this after that, the, this service is checked and this will have color or you can go with an empty box like this but without the check box and then put the box with the check that is also checked or maybe you can put something like this and once something is checked then you can put something like this so all the other services will look into the left but the one that is selected the icon will look into the right something that makes sense to you and to, of course it will help the visitor uh, see that he has checked that you can put that if you want the check and then put the double check if you want you can do whatever you like let's go for that check here and then let's go and insert that and then for the check let's go and add that and put here first check and select this one insert and now i have those settings inside here now i can go and style that if i want i can go and select the icon size to be maybe 20 and then for the color, let's go for the icon color. This is the default value, the non checked. Let's go for maybe a blue. Something like that. This one. Let's copy that. And if the icon is checked, it's going to go blue, but a little bit darker. Something like that, maybe. Let's update that because I like to save often. And then this is the first column. So let's go here and add something like the name of the service. So in order to do that, we're going to scroll down and we're going to go and take the dynamic field. I'm going to leave it inside here. And this will be replaced with the title. Since I have selected the services, then this will automatically be replaced with the title of the service. And as you can see, it already says change tires. If I go into the settings, and into the list settings here, I have the services. This is what I selected in the form when I start building it, the services that I select in the beginning. Let's go back into here. And of course, you can style it however you want that. You can put here an H4 or something and then maybe change the color, maybe change something different. Remember that you can put whatever you want from the services here. So if I go and open the services, let's go and open the services and click Add New. We will see that we have some information inside here we have also the custom fields that we have created where it was for car condition and the car type so that was the services and we have the used car or the new car and the type of car the van car motorcycle all those fields can be added in the template if you want this is depends on you and what you're going to create so let's go and add another field let's go for uh, again a field a dynamic field i'm going to put that underneath and I'm going to select here the metadata and for the data, let's go into the services. And as you can see, it says here type of car or car condition. I'm going to select type of car and this will be replaced with the type of car that I have selected for the change tires. Now, it will be better if I go and put here type of car or car that can be applied this service to and then it will name car. To do that, I'm going to put here the uh, filter field output. I'm going to select that to be yes sorry, the customized field I put, output, I'm going to select that yes. And as you can see, this is a percentage and S and this will be replaced with the actual uh, dynamic data. And I can put whatever I want before that. Remember not to delete those uh, two symbols. Let's go and put here vehicle that for the service. 
and then semicolon and as you can see vehicle for the service and then this will be replaced with the car after that we need to put here something like the price so let's go and do that let's go and here select the dynamic field let's put that in here and here i'm going to select the price now before some uh, updates for the jet appointments we had here another field inside the metadata that was the price for the slot here inside the services we have the price for this service price slot i think it was but uh, in an update that they made the team made they removed that uh, information they removed that uh, data that macro and now you cannot select anything from here now this is like a bug for me at this moment because they haven't replaced with anything so you cannot do uh, anything to add the price if you want to select something for here you have to do it manually in order to do it manually we have to go and select the custom meta field repeater key inside here if you remember we create something similar if we go into the chat engine and let's go into the post types open that and let's go into the services And for the admin column, once it's refreshed, we're going to see that we add the price here. And that price was from the app price here. So if I grab here this one and let's go back into the template and paste it here, this will be replaced with the actual price, as you can see here, 100. This is the price for the change tires. And now I need only to put here a dollar sign. So let's go and customize the field output. Let's select that to be yes. And let's go before the do the percentage and let's add here the dollar so this will be the price of the service now i can go and maybe close those gap so i can go and put that to be closer maybe i can put that to be in the center of the horizontal no vertical so let's go and put that in the middle and maybe reduce a little bit of the space between those two now i'm going to leave it as it is and maybe i'm going to put here that also to be vertical Okay, something like that. Now, in order to make it a little bit better, I'm going to select here and I'm going to select uh, maybe the uh, background to be, I don't know, a little bit gray. Let's go for background and let's go and select the color to be. Let's start with white and see how it looks. Let's go and update that and I'm going to leave the template open. Okay, now let's go back and close those fields. Let's go and close that field also. And let's go back to the form. Now we are in the form, static page booking form. I have to refresh here because I create the template. So I have to refresh the form. And now I can go to the service and I can select here the edit. And if I go down here, I will see the custom item template. I'm going to select that. And now it says custom item template and I'm going to select here the service single form template. If you cannot see here the uh, template, then it means probably that you haven't refreshed the form. So go and refresh the form in order to see the template here. Let's hit apply. Let's update that. And now let's go into the front end and see how the form looks. As you can see, now I have the change tires, season service and oil change. Now, I don't really like how this looks. I'm not going to style it uh, more. I'm just going to put a little bit of marking outside so it would be a little bit better. Let's go into that. Let's go back here and let's go and select this one. And let's go into the advanced. Let's go into the margin, margin, not marking, and put 10 maybe at the top and at the bottom. Okay, let's update that. And now let's go here and refresh. And now I can see that it looks like this. So if I go and select this one, this one, this is all, all already selected. As you can see, this changed to this. So if I go now, I can select this one and now this is selected or this selected and you can see the icon is changing. We're going also to create something for the technician. And of course, this will be uh, almost the same. Let's go and close that template. Let's go back to here. Let's go into the listings. Open that in a new tab. And as you can see, I have this one. I'm going to copy that. And now I'm going to add a new. I'm going to leave it as post. I'm going to select here the technicians at this moment because I want to create 
something for the technician and I want the dynamic data to grab from that uh, post type. And here I'm going to paste what I have, single uh, service single from template, form template. So let's change that to technicians. Technicians. So technician single form template. Let's create that. And now I can go and add three columns as well. In the first, I'm going to add the image of the technician. So let's go and select here the dynamic image. And that will be the post thumbnail. Second one will be the name. So this will be the title. Let's go and select the dynamic data from the dynamic field. And this will bring the title. So this is day one. After that, you can put, as we said before, any data that you have inside the technicians. So whatever you want to put inside the template, you can put it there. Don't go and put everything from the technicians inside there. There's no point. This is just a form. Let's go and add new just to see what we have here. So we have the certifications, the certificates, we have the years of experience and the years in the company. Maybe I can put the years of experience. Let's go and grab that in order to put that inside here. I'm going to duplicate that because it's the same like adding a new one. So duplicate that and then I can go and select that. Select that to be metadata and then I have the technicians and I have the years of experience. So this will be replaced with the years of experience and then I can go and customize the field output. And before that, I'm going to paste what I have copied, years of experience, semicolon and space. So we have something like that. Okay, I like that. So let's put that in the middle as well. Center, not here, sorry. The vertical align, let's put that in the middle. And then we can put here also the price for this technician because remember that we have different price for some technicians. So we need to put that in here so the visitor will not get confused. He will not go and book a service that it's going to cost him 100, but then he's going to select one uh, technician that takes more money for the same service. So we're going to do the same here. We're going to add the dynamic here field dynamic field and here I'm going to select metadata and here I'm going to put here the price so up price now remember that at some point they're going to fix that they're going to add something inside here that it will say price per slot or price per service or something like that so be sure to check it out and if you find something that says price, then you can select that and it will probably work the same. But at this moment, I cannot do anything else than just put it manually. Okay, let's go and select that and let's switch and select that to be in the middle again. And now let's put here the background, advanced. Sorry, style, background, let's go for white. Okay, and then let's go into the advanced and for margin, let's put 10 for the top and 10 for the bottom. And probably I need to put a little smaller image. I think this is way too big. So let's go and select that for the style. No, let's go into content and for the image size, let's go and select thumbnail, maybe. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to reduce the space here and I'm going to leave it as it is now I forgot the dollar sign here so let's go and customize the field output and select here first the dollar okay even though I think that I have select euros for my prices okay you can understand what I'm going to do here it doesn't matter let's go and update that and now let's go back into the form this is the form so I'm going to refresh again because I want that template to be uh, shown inside the form and now let's go into the appointment provider. These are the technicians. I'm going to select here. And now I can say that use custom template for items. Yes. And then the custom template ID would be the technician single form template. I'm going to update that. And since this is going to switch automatically, you don't have to go into the template and add an icon before because it will go immediately into the next page once this is selected. So let's go here, let's refresh. And 
as you can see this is not uh, grabbed the uh, template so I need to go into the form let's go and see into the provider ID okay I didn't apply that I didn't hit save so let's go into the Ignition single form template okay and let's change no nothing is going to be changed let's hit apply and let's update that refresh and now I need to just click something inside here so let's check the oil chains and once I do that I will see that Peter has empty here because uh, this is grabbed from the service and this is also a bug this should go and say what is the price for Peter now I can do a simply fix I can go into the template here and into the price here it says uh, fail back so this if field value is empty and since this field value is empty the dollar is only from the field format I can go and select and type something like price same as service let's update that and see if that worked actually in the front end let's refresh And as you can see, I mistake and <laughs> hit here same instead of same, but clearly it worked okay. Now I'm going also to edit the page in the Elementor. And let's go and look what uh, edits we can do inside the Elementor. And now if I go and click the form, I will see that I have here select form. Okay, this is the static the fields layout are column and you can put row if you want but it will not affect this then we have the fields label HTML tag is div and you can select if you want the label as well the submit type will be reload every time that we hit submit or you can go and put Ajax just to reload the form and the cache form output is no if you have any troubles with your caching plugin then you can go and put here yes let's go into the style and of course I'm not going to explain everything probably you know how to use Elementor hopefully you know already how to use Elementor so go and play with the settings and you will see what you get so we have here the rows we have here the labels so we can do something different with the labels and maybe I can go and put a little bit of different color maybe let's go and find the color no it's not here the color is here so I can go and put the blue color for the labels then I can go into the fields and as you can see I can switch the fields if I want I'm not going to do that let's go straight to the calendar so appointment calendar and let's see what we can change to make it a little bit better so we have box shadow we have header background color header text color typography arrows default color so those are the arrows arrows hover color and then we have the typography for the week days and names color background color vertical gap so if you can if you want you can put more gap into here let's delete that and that for the names then we have the dates this is the numbers that are inside here so we have the color color hover so I'm going to switch that to something different so when you hover you will go for blue something like that let's grab that blue maybe a little bit darker something like that and the active one will be also the same okay today color let's go for a red one in order to identify what is today and then background color I'm going to leave it as it is vertical gap slots so you can also change the slots if you want to have a little bit of padding typography and then the normal and active slots let's go and uh, maybe select a slot here I cannot select anything in order to see it here so let's go back and let's select something like this and now I can select something and see the slots okay so let's go and see the slots we have the container padding we have the typography we have the background color and then we have margin and border type let's go and switch that to solid and let's go and select that to be one width okay and then we need a little bit of border radius like 20 something like that and let's go for the padding and put here for the top I think we are okay with the top but let's go and unlink that and let's give five and see 
and 5 in the bottom, and here 20 and 20. Okay, something like that. I think that this is a little bit better. It's this little bit pleasant to the eyes. Now, of course, I can go and switch that and have a little bit of different background when we hover over. But I'm not going to change anything. You can do that if you want. You can go and switch to the background color and switch to the active with something different. I'm not going to change everything inside here. Uh, close button color when we hover and when it's not. This is the one, X. And then you can go and select the submit button to be something different. And of course, the next and previous page. The message as well can be a different color if you want. So as you can see, we have different uh, styling inside here. Now, these are only for Elementor. You don't have all of those settings inside Gutenberg. Let's close the, that page. Let's go now into the home. Let's go into the home G. This is made with Gutenberg. Let's close this form as well. Let's close this template. Let's close that post. And here we are in the forms. So you can copy the short code if you want, if you're using a different uh, builder. But if you're using uh, Gutenberg, then you will find also the element of Gutenberg. Remember that if you are going to use this short code, then you will have no styling at all. But if you are going to use Gutenberg, then you will have two or three things to edit. Let's go and edit the page. And as you can see, I have already added this element. I'm going to delete that. Remove. And now I can click here the plus and I can select the form. This is the form from the jet engine. So form. And now if I go here, select form, I'm going to select the static page booking. After that, we have the field layout to be column or rows. Then we can select the field labels, div or label. And then we have the submit type to be reload or Ajax and casting from output and divided between rows. Let's update that and let's go here and refresh the page. Okay, and as you can see, this is how it looks. So you can select, as you can see, this one and it went straight ahead to the uh, next one. And I don't know why. Okay, let's select that oil change and let's select that to be Peter. Now you can see that the templates are working even though I create them with Elementor. But if you have created them with Gutenberg, there you would see that you don't have all those options inside the templates. You don't have, of course, the icons because Gutenberg doesn't have anything for the icons. They have only just a few icons. You don't have the power of Elementor because all of those icons are from Elementor and not from the Jet plugins. So even though this works with the templates, I have used it with Elementor. So I need to install Elementor in order to create something good for the templates. And then you can go ahead and straight go into the form that you want and select what you want to book. Let's go for change tires. Let's go and go into back, change tires, and then select John. Okay, and then we're going to select this one and then next. And as you can see, every field is here. We can work with Gutenberg as well. Now, if you want to make changes into the Gutenberg, you have to install another plugin for the Crocoblox team. So we have to go inside the plugins from Crocoblox. Let's go into the dashboard and let's go and install another plugin, which will be the Jet Style Manager. This is what we have to install if we want to uh, make it a little bit better and have more choices for the colors and everything else. So once we do, do we do that, let's activate the plugin. Okay, and let's go to the plugins because I think that has also an update. Yes, it has an update as, as I remember. Yes, update now. So we are going to install the 1.3.4, which is the latest version. And then here you can see that we don't have any other options. But if we go now and refresh, we're going to see that we have another icon where we can change more things about here. So if you are going just to uh, purchase the Jet appointment with the Jet engine, those two plugins, without the other, without uh, any other plugin, then you re have to remember that you cannot edit that with Gutenberg. You have to go and grab also the style manager. Let's go here. And now once we click here, we will see that we have also another icon here, book style. So book style, 
what we have here, we have rows, we have fields, we have checkbox and radio fields, we have calculate fields, range fields, heading, repeater, group breaks, required mark, submit, next page, previous page and messages. Let's go and make some changes, one or two, not everything. Let's go and refresh here. And we will see that the next is now blue, so we're going to do it uh, like red. Let's go here and let's go to the next button next page and we're going to change that to something different so let's go and put that as a red if we go here we will see that now the next is red let's update that and let's go into the front end refresh and we're going to see that now the next is red last thing is going to show you how to create a template and just add dynamic fields inside the Gutenberg so let's go into the jet engine the same thing that is going to happen for the templates with Elementor is going to happen into the listings and uh, Gutenberg of course so uh, instead of serving single from template I'm going to copy that and I'm going to add you and I'm going to select here services as well I'm going to name that as service single from template and then G for Gutenberg and I'm going to select here Gutenberg and create listing forms once this opens I'm going to do pretty much the same thing now remember that you have to do something with your columns so it's good to add another plugin just to have your columns because Gutenberg cannot handle columns as well and not correctly and I have here the guy the cadence blocks so I'm going to select the row layout I'm going to select three columns and now I can go and add here something like the icon for the check so let's go and browse all let's go and select the check mark okay and now that this is edit this is added I can go here and I can click here and let's see if that was added okay check mark select that and now I can select the default icon and the checked icon now Gutenberg of course doesn't have a lot of icons so I can just select and update something as an image or something different or you can go and select from the native icons then let's go here and here we're going to add the dynamic field so let's go down here and select the dynamic field And here, as you can see, it already says change tires because this is uh, selected as title. And then for the price, I have to go here also, select the dynamic field. And switch that to metadata and then select here to have the app price. Okay, and as you can see, I have here $100. Let's go down here, select to customize the field output and then select here the dollar sign. So as you can see, you can create something like that. It's not as clean, it's not as good as it would be with the Elementor. You don't have all the choices because Gutenberg is not completed yet. I know that this is not uh, Crocoblock's fault. They are not their fault that Gutenberg is not at this moment in the place to create something better. But as you can see, it's not a good experience if you're going to work with Gutenberg. It can happen, you can do that, but if you want to style then uh, for the tablet and mobile, it will be a little bit different as you can see here. You can do that and you will see that everything is not as clean as are with Elementor. So that was the video for the form of the homepage, guys. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and, of course, for continuing that series. I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.